Welcome to this episode of the Good Citizen Podcast. It's my honor to be here today with Mike and Missy Johnson from Cornerstone Baptist Church here in Hanover, Indiana. And so if you're, if you're wondering, Mike and Missy are actually family, and my wife, Krissa Hirschberger, is going to be on just shortly. And so I don't know a lot of things today. There's a lot of uncertainty, but I am certain that I am their favorite son-in-law. <laughs> now, we will not mention that I am their only <laughs> son-in-law, <laughs> but that is, that is the only thing that is certain these days. Uh, Mike is the senior pastor at Cornerstone Baptist. Um, Mike and Missy have almost 40 years of ministry kind of all over the country, from Florida, Maryland, Michigan, California, Florida, and Indiana. And Mike was able to join me this past week on a conference call with Senator Young. And if you remember, something that he mentioned during that conference call just really stood out to me. As we were asking Senator Young, uh, one of our U.S. senators from the state of Indiana, about what is something that churches can help with? What can churches help with during this COVID-19 crisis? And he was very quick to point out this epidemic of loneliness and how he really needed churches to jump in and help combat loneliness and provide community during this crisis. And so we, we've talked about this issue of loneliness on the podcast before and how this isn't just kind of a personal problem. It's a society-wide problem dating back to the 2000 book Bowling Alone, which documented how our society was fraying, uh, the nuclear family was falling apart. But even now, you look at progressive cities like Portland, where it appears that the number one family unit is down to one person. You think about in South Korea, they're building restaurants for one person. And so in modern society, we prioritize ourselves, we worship ourselves, so maybe we shouldn't be surprised when we're by ourselves. And so that was a problem, but then here comes the quarantine, and this has just made it so much worse. And so in the time that I've been able to serve with Mike and Missy here in Hanover, Indiana, I've always been blessed at how they just walk through life with people and how they provide community through their church. So today, I wanted to try to accomplish two things. The first one was just like Senator Young and many of the the reps that I talked to, I just want to celebrate what Cornerstone's doing and also what other churches around the country are doing to provide community to the members of their church, but also to their broader community. And then hope to catch some ideas that is being done here that perhaps your church could use. And then we'd also t- like to hear your ideas. Send us an email at info at goodcitizen.us. We'd love to hear your ideas, how you're providing community um, in either your church or your community. So I've mentioned a little bit of your ministry bra- background, but will you take just a few minutes and explain how God's led you to minister, not just here in Southeast Indiana, but really all around the country? Well, the Lord uh, laid upon our hearts a number of years ago after we were in our first ministry, and uh, we were six and a half years assistant pastor, served in many capacities of a church in, in Maryland, and uh, God had impressed our hearts to go to Michigan, and we served there in the youth ministry, and it was through that time that God began to really work and burden us for church planning. Both my wife and I, uh, Missy had been a part of a church planning work in Sarasota, Florida, and uh, with her brother and family. And I was a uh, part of, with my family, church planting in Des Moines, Iowa, uh, starting uh, establishment of the Des Moines Baptist Church and in Sarasota, Liberty Baptist Church. And so through that time, God really burdened our hearts and, and uh, really began to uh, speak to us about church planting personally. And so we were in Michigan, the Lord, through a series of different things, and led us to uh, really burden our hearts for California and the West, and so we launched out with like $50 a month support and uh, believed that God really wanted us to go and load up the truck and head in all the way from Michigan to California. And we served and ultimately God led us to Manteca, California, where we pastored for about 14 years. So, you know, the Lord uh, really did a mighty work through that time and saw a church grow from the ground up, people getting saved and and lives being changed, and individuals called to full-time Christian ministry. We had eight preacher boys in the church. and So the Lord really used all that took place and young ladies that were serving God full-time. And so uh, through that time, God had led us to Florida. Then ultimately, uh, we were there in Florida for two and a half years, and then uh, God spoke to our hearts. We were working basically, it was a church replant, and then God spoke to us to 
about Indiana and put that upon our hearts. And, and uh, the Lord uh, led us here where we've been serving now for 14 and a half years. Well, it's interesting. You've been ministering really from coast to coast. Right. So you've been here in the heartland for a while, but you've seen the sunny beaches of Florida to California and back. Yes. And so I really want to just draw on kind of that experience. And that first question really would be, why do you think people are so lonely today? And maybe even some just examples that you've experienced as a senior pastor here in Hanover, Indiana. Well, what I've seen here is uh, no, no different than anywhere else. The fact that I believe it all goes back to the word of God. You know, the Bible talks about in the garden, you consider Adam and Eve, how the Lord, uh, how the Lord created man and uh, God created man. And the purpose he created man was for fellowship. God wanted fellowship with man, which is uh, unbelievable to me. And he wanted that fellowship with man. And so uh, Adam would walk with God in the cool of the morning. And then ultimately Adam realized that he was alone. And so he had this longing for fellowship. And so God created it, created Eve. And uh, so God created Eve as a completer of Adam. And so the Lord provided that need for fellowship and fulfilled that, that inner need that they had. And I believe that... Um, one of the reasons why that you see that loneliness all around, you see that with individuals, with families, you see that with whether it's senior citizens, you can see it with, with families and individuals that may seem to have everything all together on the outside, and yet they're hurting and they're longing. And in most cases, because the, the main reason I've seen the loneliness need is because people, I believe, are not really seeking the Lord as they ought. Uh, you know, because the Bible says if you seek the Lord with all your heart, you'll find him. And it's our desire, it's our burden, it's our passion as we serve here to help people to see that they need a relationship with Jesus Christ. And we've tried to provide that. We've tried to launch that at, uh, you know, through our Facebook ministry here. And we've tried to help people to see it throughout our ministry. Our whole burden, our main burden, is to reach precious souls for Jesus Christ. Amen. So, Mr. Moe, I want to pull you into this. I think about the disappearance of the front porch. In American life. I mean, if you look at most new homes in America, we no longer have a front porch. But I, I always see you going out of your way to welcome new neighbors with lots of treats and and just to say hi to the neighborhood, but also to the church as well. And so do you have any reflections on how that has changed since you began ministering, whether that was Florida, California, or here? Reaching out to everyone, um, um, whether they are the older generation, the younger, the child, the teenager, has always been a very important part of my life, reaching out to others. Because I believe that Jesus, when he, he shared, the, I want to give you one more commandment, and that is to love one another. And so I think that we need to just remember that our purpose that God has for us is to bring glory to God and to love one another, and to um, wave hello to someone, and to call someone on the telephone. One of the things that I do basically every day is I take our church, Cornerstone Baptist Church, uh, uh, we have a church directory that we made years ago, and it does have all the pictures of all the people from our church and all those that our members and attenders, and it's listed with all of their names. And uh, I think that one of the sweetest um, comments on the church Facebook is simply, I miss you, church family. And I think that we need to just continue loving and praying for one another through this very, very challenging, hard time at this time in our nation, not just in our nation, but in all the nations. This is the whole world. That's very helpful. And I, I just think also last night, that is, you were just praying uh, for the church members and you just listed them by name. I think that's so powerful. And it's a great reminder, as you mentioned, the Garden of Eden, um, down to the early church to now, 
the church is what God provided for us, not just a nuclear family, though that's important. Uh, there was a recent debate, uh, and many secular sources were saying, we need more than the nuclear family. And the Christians were responding, you're absolutely right. <laughs> it's called the church. church. Uh, you, you absolutely need more than just mom, dad, and kids. You need a family of believers to help you through life. And so as we can all say amen to that, but right. then there's the challenge of doing that normally in a very busy postmodern society. But then you have all of these quarantine stay at home orders. Mm -hmm. And so what challenges have you encountered? And I know, see you always out and about at the hospitals, um, at the coffee shops, talking with individuals, hand, handshaking, giving hugs. Um, what are some of the challenges that you've encountered given the COVID-19 crisis and the quarantines? Well, I think, I think one of the challenges, Josh, is the fact that people, one of the things we've seen here is we have used, we've had to rely heavily upon social media and uh, getting on Facebook and also utilizing YouTube as another source and trying to encourage our people to utilize that and realize this is the way that we can connect with you. This is the way we can minister. And so like uh, on a Sunday morning, they would turn on possibly a, a TV preacher, just tune into Facebook or if they don't have Facebook to YouTube and, and find out that, Hey, uh, this is the way I can connect with our church and we have our worship services and we have our Sunday morning services. We have our Wednesday, we have children's ministries going on. We have youth, uh, teens ministry through the week. And so this is a, an avenue, but I've seen that uh, there's a certain segment of our, of our people, a uh, certain group of people that just, they won't do Facebook. They won't get on the YouTube, no matter what we try to do to encourage them to do that. And so basically how do we connect with them? And so then we have to utilize either phone calls, which we're doing, letters, mm -hmm. and other avenues. But, uh, you know, I don't know how to overcome that. But another challenge I've seen is also the other night a man uh, in our church started having chest pains. His wife called me saying her husband was having chest pains. He was on, they were going to be, his, their son was going to be taking him to the hospital. And I wanted to go there, but I couldn't. Mm -hmm. And nobody else could get in there. He was the only one allowed in. And so all I could do is pray with that family over the phone. Another challenge was surgery. There was one, another saint that was scheduled to have surgery and I couldn't go in. And then we had another precious saint who actually had to go to a very important doctor visit. And once again, once again, uh, could not be there physically, but did offer, did have prayer and so forth. And then we had a very, you know, we had a special wedding plan, wonderful wedding plan and all the church has been excited about. And we could not schedule. We had to, we had to postpone the wedding uh, because of that. So those are some of the challenges we've had. Well, I think we were talking last night um, that you've taken some, some steps that seem a little old fashioned, but I, I think I read somewhere that Verizon has reported a, a massive spike in just traditional phone calls. <laughs> and I've been telling people, hey, I rediscovered this ancient art of calling you. Because <laughs> right. before this, everybody's like, you called me? <laughs> what, you're supposed to text me. Uh, but I know that you've been doing a lot of that, and I, I think you mentioned that you've called every member, yes. um, but then every attender for how, yes. how many years? We, um, going on 15 years this November, we went back through all of our list and determining to reach from A to Z every member, every attender, and reach out to each one and talk to them and just really um, converse with one another and ask ask them, how are you doing? Is there anything that we can do to be a blessing? And then praying with them, praying with each one on the telephone and uh, sharing scripture and just um, talking, just, just having a wonderful time to just converse with one another. We also have sent out letters and postcards, the old fashioned uh, way of um, you know, connecting with one another is through also mail. And so, um, and then of course the live streaming, but FaceTime, I tried FaceTime the other day and that was really interesting with some church members and a lady in the hospital, I FaceTimed her. And so that was really, that was really special. What is the, you kind know, of the sense you have, again, as you're the shepherd, you're trying to lead people spiritually. You know, what's the sense of, you know, normally you have people either head nodding in the pew or 
crossing their arms like, <laughs> bless me, I dare you. <laughs> um, but at least you get feedback, right? Yeah. <laughs> so do you have any sense on you know, just trying to stay in touch with people on, on their spiritual health? Yeah, well, with the people we've connected with, you know, we've had we've had some comments through Facebook, but we've also had uh, through phone calls, we've been able to really get some good, you know, some people really appreciate the ministry, appreciate the Facebook, appreciate the YouTube, appreciate the cards and letters. There have been a few people that have been just, you know, have really been blessed and encouraged by that. Some have expressed that. We've had people leave messages on the phone saying, thank you so much. It blessed my heart. We had somebody come by and saw the sign which had the scripture from uh, basically what time I'm afraid I will trust in thee. And that so spoke to their heart that they just, they said they were, they were weeping and just God really used that to really bless them at this time and help them realize it was okay to be afraid, but we just needed to trust in the Lord through, through our fear and to leave that to him. And so things like that have happened and others have reached out through phone calls. And having been in the community for so long, the church has also been kind of a conduit for helping serve community needs. Um, something pretty, I thought was interesting and just a blessing happened last weekend. And Mom, maybe you could talk about the baskets and a family just connecting with the church to try to bless others. Yes, um, a wonderful couple had called us and shared they would like to be a, a great encouragement. The Lord had spoke to their heart, and they would like to... Um, just know if there's some folks in our church that um, could use just a, a great big encouragement of food and toilet paper <laughs> and paper towels. And um, we said, yes, absolutely. And so um, we compiled a list of 15 families and individuals and sure enough, on Saturday morning, they had all these beautiful baskets of food, and they hand-delivered them to the front door of these church members and attenders, and um, what a blessing. And so we would get a phone call from an attender or a church member, and a track, of course, was left. Cornerstone Baptist Church track was left, and they would just be so blessed. It was such a wonderful just fresh anointing from God. It really was just such a blessing. That's right. So what are some other ways that the church has either already served the community or is planning to do so shortly? Right. One of the things we've done is through Life Choices Clinic, uh, we had a baby bottle ministry effort and over $400 was reached for that. We went to the clinic and, uh, I, and I talked to the director and he was just very gracious. We had a wonderful time with him sharing, and he shared with us some of the other things that we could pray for and some of the other things we could do. I know they're thinking about a virtual reality uh, walk for life and so forth, so we're still being engaged. A number of our people are doing that. Uh, we also had an emphasis. One member of our church took donuts and coffee to police and firefighters this past week, the beginning of the week. We've had our deacons uh, in our deacon ministry our deacons have been calling our widows and shut-ins, have been reaching out to, um, to the congregation, to those who are vulnerable in our, in our church. And so we're very thankful, you know, for that. And also we are planning on a, dr a blood drive here in the future. That's right. Looking forward to that. Praying for the, the medical professionals in the, the church as well. Yes. As they're ministering on the front lines right now. Yes. So... Um, before we switch gears, and Chris is going to join us here in just a moment, but any other just meaningful moments or kind of God moments that you've experienced during uh, this time? Yes, I believe that one of the greatest blessings is the fact that we have had the opportunity through social media. We put out a video, and this video um, was um, giving to the whole world the salvation it was a salvation video and so presenting how you could have a personal relationship with jesus christ and so if you go to our facebook page if you have not personally received jesus christ as your personal savior this video will show you how you can have right now at a time that is so needful in your life to have a personal relationship with the lord jesus christ and then also um every 
just about every day, if you go to the Facebook page, you will see verses and encouragement and testimonies from our Sunday school teachers to other members of our church, from our children's ministry. We have just a wonderful avenue to encourage you. And uh, we are so looking forward to seeing you again. You know, as Jesus said, Shirley, you know, I will come quickly. And Shirley, once again, we look forward to seeing you again. And we just ask God's greatest blessings on your life through this time. I might ask, just as Chris is coming, any other just meaningful moments or God moments that you've, you've experienced just in the last couple of weeks? Well, we, we are just... You know, we're just blown away by the by the way in which the Lord has worked. I had a, a man call our church and leave a message stating that uh, he was so blessed by just going by and seeing that sign. And we have on the sign, uh, we say, we love you, we're praying for you, and we gave our phone number. <laughs> and, and this man, <laughs> he didn't know how else to find my phone, our phone number, so he, he reached us through that, and he called, and, and he, he shared a need and then we were able to reciprocate, and he was one of the ones we gave the baskets to. And it was just such a blessing to hear from him and how he'd been blessed. And then there was a man who had called and, and shared that he had taken a picture of uh, the scripture verse that we left on our sign and had shared it with all his college uh, friends. And he was a psychologist and, and uh, even including the president of Asbury College and, and individuals have been so blessed by the fact that uh, you know, that we are relying upon the Lord, trusting the Lord through this time and trusting him for his guidance and peace as we minister and as we face the challenges that God has given us. I mean, it's, this is a new thing. Right. Uh, it's all, it's all unprecedented, but uh, the Lord is leading and showing us and God's given me such incredible family and support uh, team around me to help uh, create different ideas and ways in which we can be engaged in helping our people. That's a wonderful story, and I appreciate what Mom said just about the salvation message. Just a few episodes ago, we had Ben Shetler on talking about the goal of good citizenship. And we can go out and do good things like having a blood drive or taking donuts to the, the policemen, etc. But the goal of all of that is ultimately to point others to the one true King, Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's what we hope our witness accomplishes during this time. If you had a, a billboard to display a message uh, to the Big C Church, and this is a question that's borrowed by or borrowed from podcaster Tim Ferriss, uh, what would you put on that? I would put, I, would, I think about the words of Jesus Christ. You know, I saw that passion play on the weekend, uh, Jesus by Sight and Sound Studios, and such a powerful, dramatic picture that the Lord, the person who played Jesus, gave as Jesus said, as he was out there on the boat in the midst of that storm, that raging storm, he said, be still peace, mm. be still. And what I would say to people is, Hey folks, God is sovereignly in control and he's going to continue to give us peace through this time. And we need to take the message of the gospel and the power that God has given us, not be panicked, uh, not give into the fear and the fear mongers, but just simply to realize that our God can still the raging storm. Amen. Amen. That's a great word. So joining us now is Carissa Hirschberger, my better half. She's been on the podcast before. The episode was drama in the church, not the, some of the drama. We were talking about difficult people earlier. <laughs> There's lots of <laughs> drama in the church, but actually using theater uh, to proclaim the, the message of salvation. So Carissa, thank you for joining us today. Glad to be here. Yes. And so Carissa it needs lots of sympathy. She puts up with me all of the time. Um, so, and also, she's sworn to secrecy about certain stories and other things, so I'm just, just joking, but glad to have her on. We've been talking about how Cornerstone Baptist, one church here in Hanover, Indiana, has been combating loneliness, building community during the quarantine, and wanted to talk to you specifically. You lead the children's ministry, kids' ministry at Cornerstone. Also, you've been doing a lot with our online presence, so I just want to ask you, what are some, some ways you've connected, remain connected with the kids at church during this time? Well, I would say my main theme with the River Kids, is what we call our kids program at Cornerstone Baptist, is based out of Matthew 19. 
where it says, but Jesus said, suffer little children, forbid them not to come unto me. So even though we can't, in a sense, gather physically, we still want to find ways to bring the little children to Jesus. And I have always had the mindset that we can shine for Christ no matter where we are, no matter what corner of the world, no matter uh, the time period, no matter the scenario. And so at CBC, we have tried to minister to the littlest babies all the way to uh, the, the oldest person. And the point is we want them to know the love of Christ. So in answer to your question, Josh, is we have done, I, I personally have had some fun being creative with this aspect because I think everyone has really had to tap into their creativity during this time right. because here we were, right? We had all the resources. We had the, we had the posters, we had the facilities, we had all the cool gimmicks and gadgets. Well, guess what? Now we take it all away. What do you do? Ah, suddenly we become movie producers and directors and uh, creative artists that we never knew we had. And so uh, what's been fun, though, is trying to think of different ways. So a few of the ways we have reached out to the kids. Um, I've had a fun time sending cards to them. It's more like just trying to do a personal touch to each person. They're all different. You know, I don't just do a stock card. How you doing? Have a great day. See you next time. But it's it's more just trying to really get involved with each kid. You know, ask them their interests, share some things you know about them, being personal. The more personal you get with someone, the more that you are helping them through this process too. And we over Easter were able to send out um, some cards and also some little Easter goodies to the kids, some Easter storybooks and some candies and things. You know, typically at our church, we have a fun Easter egg hunt. But we didn't get to do that this year. And so we still wanted them to feel that they had something special from our church. And then also on Facebook, we've been doing some different fun challenges periodically through the weeks for the kids. And I have a puppet, Hugga, who I do her on a Facebook page of her own. But what I've used her as well for is at church. And the kids know her very well. And so she tries to still stay connected with them on a regular basis. So uh, just a, a plug for Hugga. <laughs> if you haven't checked out Hugga's Facebook page, it's hilarious. Hugga is an abominable snowman. Um, I'm not sure if it's he or she. You know, or that's still that's still undecided. We we still haven't confirmed the origin of her genetics. She's very she's very complicated. Yeah, it's very complicated. <laughs> and the problem, my problem with Huggy is that anytime I'm around in a live event, I suddenly become the butt of all of the jokes. <laughs> and so I try to avoid being present. Um, now, just one example of mm. Hugga's ingenuity and oh, the boy. fact that you know Hugga can just kind of say what she's thinking. Um, you were doing an event for a group of senior saints. Uh, I think the group was Forever Young. Was yes, that very, <laughs> very sweet group of people. Yeah. <laughs> and so Hugga, which is a, a white puppet. Uh, we'll have to have Hugga on the podcast sometime. But it's a, a white puppet, white hair, and it's a puppet. Uh, and, and so I wasn't quite sure how this was going to go. Because mm -hmm. Hugga normally talks to little kids. And here Hugga is presenting to senior saints. And Hugga just gets up there and basically says... Hey, look. My Ever people, right? You're right. Yeah, and my people. And and I ask, what do you mean, Hugga? Because she's definitely got a mind of her own. It's very hard to control where her mouth and mind go. And she said, well, look, my hair, their hair, my people. White hair. Yeah. yeah, so. yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, yeah. I think you mentioned no teeth. Right, um, no teeth. So That's right. <laughs> I'm yes. sitting back there wondering. Oh, uh, yeah. She's got this thing stuck on her teeth. I mean, she really does. She still yes. she talks about it all the time. Well, and my joke to Krista about this, uh, which is quite dangerous, is something about her talking to herself. But, you know, it, <laughs> it is what it is. So, yeah, what Hugga is, awesome, is a great tool. What is awesome about what you just said is that my children, it is normal to them. That's how often it happens. So <laughs> it doesn't shock my, my little children anymore, you know, that mommy's in there talking to Hugga. Yeah. And Hugga, they're having a good conversation. Well, and as you said, anything during this crisis to, I think, get people out of kind of their everyday process at their house, um, just being depressed about what's going on, fearful. Um, right. They're fearful about what's going to happen. 
Fear is a big thing. So and kids, kids experience it too sure. in their own ways. They have to process it differently. And we can't disregard them. We have to validate their fears and let them know that there is a way to overcome that. And that's one, one way that I've tried to reach out to them at this time with CBC to let them know there is still fun to be had, even though the world has changed completely. You've also been leading up the efforts uh, to live stream services, either Facebook, YouTube, and just to, uh, I read somewhere yesterday that certainly you want a high quality production, but also the more important measure is engagement. Right. How are people getting getting on there and talking to each other, even in the comments, yes. that sort of thing. So would you mention just a few ideas, things that you pursued with that? Sure. So what's neat is on our Facebook page as administrator, I'll see you know, the day it was created. And it was created actually September of 2010. So we're celebrating 10 years of a Facebook presence. That's a long time. Yeah. And a lot of people before this pandemic said, I don't have Facebook. And even now you hear it still, but not as often mm -hmm. because people are realizing it is a tool. You have the internet. It's a way to connect. And as we were already on Facebook as our church, you know, we had regular presence. We were able to engage with different posts, different events, different people. We had to, uh, we had our services live streamed weekly, but now it's all on Facebook. And so we've had to really pay even more close attention to our engagements. Uh, we've got a lot more traffic on there from people that are not even affiliated with our church. And that's, that's a blessing. We're able to see our reach extend further yeah. because people are searching and we're there. And so we've, you know, had to go through a process of looking at our equipment. We've had to get better audio, uh, better vi video, better uh, equipment to, to help with that. I think everyone has been in this, oh, scatter, fluster, help. We got to figure out uploading the videos and timing and all of those things. So as we come to a close, I was thinking about perhaps your favorite phrase about church. It's, I mean, you have lots of favorite phrases, but, but one that strikes me as incredibly true and something not experienced just by Cornerstone, but by church leaders that I've, sp I've spoken to all across the country. And that is church gets the leftovers. It often gets people's leftovers, their time, their money, their attention. And for the American church, it just, it seems like coming to a building on Sunday morning at 10 a.m., which is our service time, was just kind of one more thing that people tried to smash into their <laughs> overfilled schedules. And of course, the burden as a ministry leader is to see people to seek first the kingdom of God. Yes. And so as we close, just maybe, first of all, Pastor, your thoughts on maybe how will this perhaps affect the congregation? Do you see some positives coming out of that? Um, and any last encouragement, the church leaders, and then Chris, I'll ask you the same question. Okay. Yeah, I definitely see that this is going to be a real, it's a wake-up call for all of us. And it's my hope and prayer that this is going to change all of us. It's changed me. And I pray that I'm a changed pastor and and that I am uh, realize more the importance of the Christ life, that I need Christ, I need to depend on him, that when it all comes down to it, it's me and my relationship with the Lord. When I take everything else away, I have the Lord, I have my family, but I need him, I need his power, and I need to, to keep the main thing the main thing, and that is to reach as many people as I can for Jesus Christ. The loneliness they deal with is because they need a relationship. And if they have that relationship with Christ, then it's a day by day walking with the Lord, trusting him, living in his word, living out the words of Christ. And it's my prayer and, and hope that as leaders, as we come back, that it won't be the same old, same old, that we won't just dismiss what we receive, that we'll just forget about it. But we realize that God ordained this in our lives for a reason. And I believe it's a, it's a warning to the church and it's a wake up call for us to uh, really be engaged in the in in this this battle this warfare before us to prepare for the Lord's return and to do all we can to bring as many people to Christ as we can to give them the word uh, the words of Christ I appreciate that in in your example now almost 40 years of, of doing just that all Thank across you. the country so Chris any final thoughts well, I think that we're going to look at church gathering, g getting back to the assembly, which it is a special time that we can gather together with other believers physically to worship our Savior. But I believe that 
after this is over and we assume a sort of normal pace, which will be a different normal pace, I think, we're going to see that our preferences, our priorities, and what was such a big deal before is not going to be as amazingly out there anymore. I think we're going to discover that that God may have, may, if we are willing and ready, he's going to use this, especially in church leaders, to form a different battle plan and strategy for reaching others. We've had to be very creative, as I mentioned before, but now I believe that the gospel focus is going to be even, even more specific. And I am excited to see what God's plan is through all of this, you know, it can be hard, the purging and the transition of going through it. But I am seeking and praying and hoping that maybe this will really encourage Christians to share the good news even more. Amen to that. Well, you, you heard it here. I, I love that billboard statement. Be still. Be still and know that God's in control and that he's at work. We've been praying for revival. And maybe, though I don't like the reason for it, uh, maybe God is at work in a special way in our time, and so we'll continue to pray in that way. Thank you so much for taking some time out to join us today. Thank you. You're welcome.